Good morning and welcome to the fifth meeting of the Power of Chaffrey and Drainage Commission Scotland Bill Committee in 2018. The only item on our agenda today is to screen the amendments lodged to the Bill and apply to tests. The first test is of whether the Committee is of the view that any of the amendments adversely affect private interests. If any such amendments are identified, the Committee will then apply a second <coughs> test to consider whether any of those amendments have sufficient merit that there is a possibility of their being agreed to after further scrutiny. If the Committee is of the view that any amendment passes both tests, then the consideration of the amendments will be paused to allow for a notification and objection period. I would like to invite members of the committee, uh, if there's any amendments that they wish to identify um, as adversely affecting private interest. Amendment 9. I would agree with that. Okay, it appears that Amendment 9 is agreed to. Are there any other amendments? No. No, the other amendments uh, are, are sensible amendments and uh, amendments that we've been working with the promoters, which will strengthen the bill. Mm. Yeah. Agreed. That approach, huh? agreed. Okay, the committee has agreed that Amendment 9 is the only amendment that adversely affects private interest. This is an amendment which relates to the new land plans that have been brought forward by the promoters of the bill. Um, I would now like to invite members to uh, comment on whether they, on the second aspect of the screening process, on whether they believe this amendment is of sufficient merit that there's a possibility of it being agreed to after further scrutiny. Yes, I would agree with that, that that would be the case. Okay, okay, I can confirm the view of the committee that Amendment 9 both adversely affects private interests and has sufficient merit that there is a possibility of it being agreed to after further scrutiny. Now, um, as this amendment was lodged on behalf of the promoter, it is the promoter's responsibility to notify those affected about the implications of the amendment and, indeed, how to lodge any objections. However, as the committee may specify how this should be done um, and how long the objection period should be, um, I would now like to invite members to consider uh, the suggestion in paragraph 13 of the papers, which states that, um, pers uh, that all um, heritors whose private interest would be adversely affected um, should be contacted uh, by the promoters. So, heritors who are um, seeing, who are new heritors and who are seeing a substantial increase potentially in their. Yeah, that's, 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 that's a sensible, that's fair. sensible approach, convener. Okay, and content for that approach. Um, and with regards to the objection paper, um, I refer members to paragraph 14 in the papers. Um, and uh, given that the committee is not uh, scheduled to meet again until the 12th of September, uh, the committee could consider allowing a 60-day period of objections, which mirrors the uh, preliminary uh, stage of the bill period for objections. Yes, I agree to that. Okay. Well, and that, that concludes our consideration of the amendments. Um, the clerk will liaise with the promoters of the bill accordingly and the committee's web page will be updated. Um, I further wish to update committee members that um, a letter and updated schedule of heritors has been received from the promoters and has been published on the department's website. Uh, the next meeting of the committee will be on Wednesday 12 September 2018 at 10am, at which we will take evidence on any objections lodged to Amendment 9, or, if no objections are lodged, begin the proceedings on the amendments lodged to the Bill. And with that, I close the meeting. <laughs>